This week on Ebert and Roper, the best movies of 2006. Some you've missed and some that are available on DVD. It's our annual celebration of the best movies of the year. Sitting in for Roger this week is New York Times film critic A.O. Scott. Welcome back, Tony. Always a pleasure to be here, Richard. Let's get to the countdown. Right. Number 10 on my list is Blood Diamond. Nothing is ever going to blunt the American appetite for bling, but Blood Diamond should give you pause when you're shopping for a rock to go on your finger. The increasingly impressive Leonardo DiCaprio is excellent oh. as a South African American diamond Leon. smugglers, Leon. and Can Jennifer Connelly so gives a very strong performance as a journalist. But the great Jaiman Hansu owns this movie as a man who will do anything to save his wife and son. I am his father! His father should have protected him! I must go find him! I cannot live without knowing! Shoot me if you want, but I'm going! At number nine, I have the breakout indie comedy of the year, Little Miss Sunshine. Husband and wife directors Jonathan Dayton and Valerie Ferris and screenwriter Michael Arndt have crafted a perfectly realized dark comedy about a family that would have to do some healing to be elevated to the level of dysfunctional. Perfect, perfect. You're the world champion growler. Time for your beauty rest. Get in there. My number eight film is Robert De Niro's The Good Shepherd. Nearly every scene includes an Oscar-winning actor, including De Niro himself as a retired general who helps form the CIA, but worries about the agency becoming too powerful. The Soviets, without firing a shot, have taken over half the world. They're breathing down their necks. They'll be in our backyard before you know it. So I've been telling the president about the need to create a new foreign intelligence service, one that would do in peacetime what OSS did during the war. This is a complicated, smart thriller spanning from before World War II to the Bay of Pigs debacle. Crackling suspense, some neat twists, and an absolutely amazing cast. It's interesting this year, you know, both um, Blood Diamond and The Good Shepherd, you have um, filmmakers trying to use kind of entertainment genres to explore political issues, both in the present and the past. I mean, we'll see a lot of that, I think. In, in, yeah, and it's uh, always a tricky thing because you don't yeah. want to exploit the very serious situation, but you also have to have entertainment and big stars just to get these movies made. That's right, exactly. Number 10 on my list is A Prairie Home Companion. Now, this might have made the list of runners-up if Robert Altman hadn't died last month, but I did like this wayward, bittersweet comedy quite a lot, and I loved Meryl Streep and Lily Tomlin in it. Altman, I have to say, probably meant more to me than any other American director of my lifetime. I grew up with and I grew up on his movies, and it hurts me to think that there won't be any more. He said, Wanda, you broke my heart. Signed, Daddy. She did 30 days for one glazed donut. A 59-cent donut. If it had been rock and roll, she could have thrown oh, sofas sure. out of the window. Hotel done. window, no. not, not even her own she, sofa. She yeah. could throw somebody else's sofa out. Number nine is Little Children. I know I we think. both like this one a lot. This is only Todd Field's second feature as a director, yeah. but I think he's proven himself to be a first-rate <laughs> filmmaker. Emma Bovary is a feminist. Oh, that's nice. So now cheating on your husband makes you a feminist? No, no, no. It's not the cheating. It's the hunger. The hunger for an alternative. Number eight for me is Volver. Penelope Cruz no, no, no. is smart, funny, sexy, and maternal, and tragic in this latest movie from Pedro Almodovar, which bursts with color, life, and feeling. Y el olor? ¿Qué olor? En el lavabo y aquí? Si es como si acabara de estar mamá pelliendo ese culo lleno. No lo leí vosotras. And Carmen Maura, reunited with Almodovar after nearly two decades playing Cruz's possibly dead mother, gives this movie an extra spark of mischief and pathos. I love this director and I love this movie. Yeah, I love the little children and Volver. They definitely would have been in my next ten. And Penelope Cruz in particular, yes. who I think a lot of American audiences only know from movies like uh, Vanilla Sky. And they think, well, I don't know if she's that good of an actress, but in her native tongue, it's like a, seeing a whole new yes. Yes. star on screen. And, and, and with Almodovar just building this movie around her, her performance and kind of putting her up on this great movie star yeah, pedestal. Terrific it's wonderful. choices. Dame Judi Dench and Kate Blanchett both give Oscar-worthy performances in my number seven film, Notes on a Scandal. Based on a terrific novel, this is a writer's film with crisp dialogue and perfectly rendered relationships. Yet you think I wanted to be here with you? You need me. I'm your friend. You put me in prison. I could get two years. They'll fly by. I'll visit you every week. And Kate Blanchett gives yet another sterling performance in my number six film, Babel. Alejandro Gonzalez and Yuritu directed Amoris Peros and 21 Grams. They both made previous top ten lists on the show. And he does it again with this challenging, multi-layered fable that's somewhat like an international version of Crash. Never gonna forgive me, Leah. You know what I'm talking about? 
Okay. You just let me know when you're ready to argue. True to its title, Babel is about our still vast differences in culture and language and the lack of communication that often exists within nuclear families. You know, I'm glad to see that movie on your list, even though I didn't like it very much. Um, this is a movie that really split a lot of people. It it, really it's, did. it's a movie to argue about, and mm -hmm. I'm glad, you know, to see people taking both sides about it. For me, uh, I just felt like the performances were very strong, the filmmaking from scene to scene was was powerful, but the whole thing never really added up to, to very much. I know, much convincing especially among a lot me. of uh, critics, there's a feeling like we, we've seen seen this before from this filmmaker. It is, I think, intended to be the, the last part of a trilogy, yeah. but I thought it was still very, very effective. Number seven on my list is 51 Birch Street. It's a small movie, a very personal documentary by Doug Block, who tried to figure out the puzzle of his parents' marriage. Now, this is our unemotional, undemonstrative father, who all of a sudden is saying I love you all the time. What? He's uh, the new and improved dad. Number six for me is Three Times from the great Taiwanese master Hu Xiaoxian. Three bittersweet love stories set at different periods of history starring the same pair of actors. They're wonderful. Chu Xi and Chen Chang. For me, Three Times, a movie that I think too few American audiences got a chance to see, is the most romantic picture of the year. Tony, I'm really glad to see you have a documentary on your top ten list. I had several that almost made it. Uh, Deliver Us From Evil, yes. Heart of the Game, uh, yeah. Shut Up and Sing. I mean, these are great films, and I think we're in a real renaissance period for documentaries. Great I agree. To see one on your I list. Agree. Okay, coming up next, Tony and I continue to list the best movies of 2006. New York Times film critic A.O. Scott and I are counting down the best movies of 2006. My pick for the number five movie of the year should be a strong contender for best foreign language film. The Lives of Others is a spellbinding glimpse of life in East Germany in 1984. That, of course, is the year of Big Brother, and it was some five years before the collapse of the Berlin Wall. The screenplay is like a perfectly executed chess match. <laughs> At number four, I have perhaps the most intense and emotionally draining movie of the year, United 93. As he did with Bloody Sunday, director Paul Greengrass takes us into the heart of a tragic day and films it with unflinching, documentary-style realism, yet he never exploits the situation. Two planes just hit the World Trade Center. Nobody's going to help us. We have to do something right now. Colonel, I need rules of engagement. Do we shoot this flight down? We have to do it now. Because we know what happens if we just sit here and do nothing. Some said this film was going to be too much too soon. I found it to be a necessary and worthy tribute to the victims and to their families. I think you're absolutely right. It took me a long time to get to see this film. I didn't review it for the Times, and I, I was, you know, I was reluctant yeah. as 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 a, a New Yorker and an American and everything else. But I right. think it's a, a really fine film, and as you said, doesn't exploit or over dramatize or over politicize the situation at all. Really, just shows you, takes you back to that day and absolutely. into the reality of it. Number five on my list, which was number nine on Richards, is Little Miss Sunshine. For the bus gag, for Alan Arkin, for Marcel Proust, Paul Dano, Tony Collette. This is the best written, best directed comedy in a long time. Mm. And one of the rare comedies, I think, that's even funnier on second and third viewings. As I watched it again, I thought Preston Sturges, wherever he is, would be smiling right mm. now. I'd like to dedicate this to my grandpa, who showed me these moves. Oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> is he here? Where's your grandpa right now? in the trunk of our car. Okay. And number four is Days of Glory. This turned out to be a very strong year for war movies, especially as World War II continued to provide fertile ground for filmmakers with an eye on the turmoil of the present. On se bat tous ensemble contre Hitler pour la liberté, l'égalité et la fraternité. Rashid Bouchareb's old school infantry combat epic about North African soldiers fighting to liberate France from the Nazis was a powerful exploration of bravery and injustice with a first rate acting ensemble that won the prize for best male performance in Cannes. 
It's a great cast, Tony. It's a great film. And I think, you know, going back to Saving Private Ryan, which is yeah. almost 10 years now, there have been so many great films about World War II. And, be, and prior to that, I think there were a generation of filmmakers that kind of felt, well, the, all those stories had been right. told. Right. And now we're seeing so many different angles. And they're not history lessons. It's not no. like some, oh, i got to sit through this. But, you, I mean, I know for... For myself, I am learning something. Seeing something. Yeah. Well, stuff. this is this is a side. These soldiers. There were 130,000 soldiers from the French colonies who yeah. fought against the Nazis for the French. Their stories haven't been told, and they raised some really interesting issues about not yeah. only about the time, but about what's going on yeah. in France now with with the immigrant populations. Wonderful movie. Great film. Coming up next, Richard and I continue our list of the best films of 2006. Knowing he was with you that day, and seeing him in that photograph. I don't know why it makes me feel better, but it does. It's so silly, isn't it? No, it's not. We're ranking the top films of 2006. I hope you'll indulge my choice of twin picks for the number three slot, Clint Eastwood's masterful Flags of Our Fathers and the equally powerful Letters from Iwo Jima. These films stand as independent achievements and stories, but each has even more impact as part of a two-part cinematic novel. In both cases, we have great sympathy for the good men on both sides caught up in a war that was necessary, the so-called Good War. Helen Mirren deserves an Academy Award for her work in my number two movie, The Queen. Stephen Frears directs a slice of instant history in this docudrama-style movie examining the week just after Princess Diana's death in 1997. I think the princess has already paid a high enough price for exposure to the press, don't you? Now, if there's nothing else, I must get on. The children have to be looked after. Of course. <clears throat> well, goodbye, Your Majesty. This is a funny, razor-sharp, and touching film. Yes, it's very well done. This is definitely in my second, you know, my 11 through 20 list. Um, and mm. the wonderful thing about it is that it does show you two different angles. You can come away from it thinking, well, this is a movie about how out of touch the royal family is. Mm -hmm. Or you can think this is a movie about a woman trying to preserve her dignity in the face of this media onslaught. Yeah, and they're just they're such, a, such a great contrast, Tony, because you see, of course, the queen in the royal palace and their country <laughs> estate. And then you see Tony Blair stepping over toys in his house because <laughs> the kids are running around and everything. Yeah. So it's just beautifully done. Yes, very well done. For me, the third best movie of the year is L'Enfant, even though some critics, I won't name them, <coughs> failed to see the brilliance of this film. This is the deceptively simple tale of a Belgian petty thief, his girlfriend, and their newborn baby, directed by Jean-Pierre and Luc Dardenne. These are two of the best filmmakers working in the world today. I insist on that, and it's a shame that their work isn't more widely appreciated in this country. But Dans une heure, je vais au parc du Botanique avec le Lando. Je m'endors sur un banc, puis je vais chez les flics pour dire qu'on nous l'a volé. Number two on my list is Pan's Labyrinth, Guillermo del Toro's blend of fairy tale and political thriller, set in the last days of resistance to Franco's dictatorship in Spain. Ella ha creído en vuestra esencia desde el principio. Le alegra mucho vuestro éxito. This is a beautiful, devastatingly sad, very strange movie about the power of the imagination and about also the limits of that power. It's certainly like nothing else anyone's going to see this year or probably next year or the year <laughs> after that. And of course, I think because we talk about it being a fairy tale, some people yeah. might think, oh, I can take the kids. Do it's not. rated R. Yes. And maybe 12 or older can handle it, but not the little ones. I saw a review, I think, in Salon in which they, uh, the, the reviewer said, if you take your young children, they'll be scarred for life. Yes. Now, so. this, is, this, is a, this is a very heavy, very <laughs> serious. Is, uh, you know, I felt after seeing bench warmers, but that's a whole other, <laughs> other story. <laughs> okay. Kind of Coming up next, our picks for the top movies of 2006. We've come to the moment where we each announce our picks for the top film of 2006. For me, it's The Departed. Martin Scorsese should already have at least two Best Director Oscars. Maybe he'll finally win for this film, but either way, I think it's the best movie of the year. His brutally funny and violent reimagination of the Hong Kong classic Infernal Affairs is also his most entertaining film in years. Nobody in the history of movies does neighborhood gangsters like Scorsese. This time he takes to the mean streets of Boston. Matt Damon and Leonardo DiCaprio are two of our best young actors. They're in films that were already on my list. Here they play opposite sides of the same coin. Both so deep undercover that at times it's almost impossible to tell who's the good guy and who's the criminal. Getting the feeling we got a cop in my crew. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of getting that feeling too. He's one of yours. 
inside. Look, Frank, if you don't relax, if you don't relax, I can't relax. And then there's Jack Nicholson reminding us that before he became Jack the movie star in capital letters, he was a great movie actor with a seemingly endless supply of creativity and madman energy. You sure it's not the FBI? <laughs> you know, past day situation like this, I kill everybody. Everybody that works for me. Nicholson's mob boss is a sadistic, racist pig, and there's no charm or winking self-consciousness in this performance. He's not one of those characters we love to hate. We just hate him. The Departed isn't the greatest movie about mid-level gangsters ever made for one reason, and that reason is Goodfellas. But in a year in which a lot of people are touting dream girls, I'll take these nightmare guys. I would also mention Mark Wahlberg, who I think yeah. is just terrific in this movie as, as the kind of the, the, the guy who's trying, yeah. to, trying to unravel this whole, this whole thing. Yeah. I, I, I had a lot of fun. Great. Um, at that movie. To me, the best movie of the year is Letters from Iwo Jima. Richard had it at number three. Clint Eastwood made two excellent movies this year. One of them, Flags of Our Fathers, was really good. The other one, I think, will go down in history as one of the all-time great war movies. Eastwood does something really simple in this movie. He tells the story of an important battle from the point of view of what we think of as the enemy. And he makes the simple point that wars are fought on all sides by human beings. <laughs> Ken Watanabe as a Japanese general leading his troops towards certain death is funny, dignified, and heartbreaking. This is a fantastic performance, one of the best of the year. It seems to me that in this movie, Eastwood tries something unprecedented, exploring an alien culture, telling a war story from the point of view of the losers, the bad guys, making a Japanese movie in the Japanese language, and he brings it all off without a wrong note. Well, Clint Eastwood is just amazing as a filmmaker, yeah. what he's doing in his 70s, and it's great to see this second chapter of the story come out, because yeah. I think Flags of Our Fathers, for whatever reason, didn't quite resonate with audiences, yeah. and yeah. critics were warm, but not you know, thrilled by it, and now you have this follow-up, which I think it really does enhance the first I think film, it does. It sends you back to it, and, and, and they, as you said, they work separately, they stand alone, but together they, they are really just a kind of amazing achievement. I mean, I think he's, he's the best we have right now. It's Scorsese amazing. is, it, no, you know, no knock on Scorsese, but, but Clint, for me, right now, is yeah. the man. It's amazing that with Clint Eastwood being one of the biggest stars of all time, yeah. if you erase his entire acting career, he'd be considered a very important part of American cinema for all the films he's directed. Uh, that's exactly great right. Right. Coming up next, we'll recap our complete list of the best films of 2006, and we'll tell you which of them are already available on DVD. Closed captioning for Ebert and Roper is sponsored by... And now, our complete list of the best films of 2006. That's At number 10, I have so Blood man. Diamond. Number 9, Little Miss Sunshine. Number 8, The Good Shepherd. Notes on a Scandal is number 7. Babel at number 6. At number 5, I have The Lives of Others. My pick for the fourth best movie of the year, United 93. At number 3, Flags of Our Fathers and Letters from Iwo Jima. Number 2, The Queen. And number 1, The Departed. And as for myself, at number 10, I have A Prairie Home Companion. At number 9, Little Children, the eighth best movie, Volver, at number seven, the documentary 51 Birch Street, number six, the Taiwanese film, Three Times, number five, Little Miss Sunshine, four, Days of Glory, number three, L'Enfant, the second best movie of the year, Pan's Labyrinth, and number one, the best movie of 2006, was Letters from Iwo Jima. Okay, out of all the movies that we have discussed today, many of them are already available on DVD, including A Prairie Home Companion, Little Miss Sunshine, United 93, L'Enfant, and a film that Tony loved three times. Yeah, well, as always, it turns out to be a pretty good year. You know, well, yeah, it's you complain so, during yeah. the year, you hear the critics whining yeah. about uh, how things aren't the way they used to be, but... You know, it, it, I'm glad you brought that up, Tony, because it drives me nuts, because film critics, so many of them start off their year-end pieces by saying it was a bad year for movies. And it's like, that's like saying it was a bad year for books. You walk into a <laughs> bookstore, there's going to be a lot of good ones, there's going to be a lot of bad ones. And if you think that every year, find another gig. Sometimes it, it's a little hard to find, and you have to look and dig for it, but that's, you know, that's what we're here well, for. And I can tell 
tell uh, from the do. feedback that I get from viewers of this show that people do want that. They thirst for these movies to come to their town. Yeah. And thank yeah. God now they can at least catch them on DVD if they don't come out in their hometown. Absolutely. So, Tony, thanks so much for sharing your picks with us. It's been a lot Appreciate of fun. It. Thanks for having me. And I want to urge everybody to check out our brand new fantastic website at themoviestv.com. Until next week, the balcony is closed. Give all your favorite people all their favorite food? IHOP gift cards. They're the perfect holiday gift. Only at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. It's Lane Bryant's biggest sale of the year. Save up to 80% throughout the store starting December 26th at Lane Bryant and LaneBryant.com. If you have a cold and high blood pressure, you should know decongestants can raise your blood pressure. Take decongestant free core seed and HBP. Powerful relief that won't raise your blood pressure. Net Zero gives you the fastest surfing available over dial-up and virus protection starting at $9.95. Try it risk-free for 30 days with our money-back guarantee.